Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura. And have you been noticing in the stores lately all the beautiful faux furs that are available? Well, I have a quick and easy project that you can make with any faux fur. And we're going to cover some tips and tricks to make sewing go so quick. The faux fur I'm going to use today is from Shannon Fabrics and it is a Lux Cuddle Red Fox. And it is 100% polyester, which means you can machine wash this and you can tumble dry. You don't even need fabric softener. As with all furs, there is a nap to this fabric. And a nap means that when you rub your hand along the fabric, it goes in one direction. If you put your hand going the other, you can actually see that the direction of the fabric changes. So the nap is a direction of the fabric. And most furs do have a nap. And knowing the nap is going to help you sew with the fabric. Now you're going to be able to do this method with any faux fur. When you buy the fabric, it's really good if you mark the direction of the nap along the back. You want the nap to be going in the natural direction. So marking the direction of the nap is going to be very helpful. And with this red fox, I'm going to just stitch a very simple throw. Now this could be cuddled up on the couch or you can throw it on your bed. And the fabric is 60 inches wide. So I'm going to use five yards and that is going to give me two and a half yards for each side of the throw. Now that's going to fit beautiful on the top of a queen size bed or you can cuddle with it on the couch. When sewing with the fur, you want the nap to be going in the same direction. So when you sandwich the two pieces together, both the naps need to be going in the same direction. And that's where the arrow will come in handy. When the naps are going in the same direction, when they're stitched on the machine, they nestle together really nicely and they don't move as much. If you have them going against each other, they want to shift and it's easier to sew with the naps going in the same direction. So if you buy the five yards, you can't fold it in half and consider one of this a seam because the nap is going to be running in the opposite direction. You will need to have two pieces exactly the same size. And to cut the fur, it really is simple. It's best if you don't use scissors because as you cut, you're going to cut through all of those fibers. And what you want to do is cut so that the long fibers are still there. So an X-Acto knife really works well. Make sure you have a surface that you can cut on. I like to make sure I have a nice sharp blade and I'm going to be able to cut right along that drawing line. And just take the X-Acto knife and run it along your seam and just do a couple of inches at a time and then you're going to be able to pull the fur apart and you'll be able to see that you're not losing a lot of those long fibers. You're not cutting any of those long fibers off. So just continue cutting all the way down that seam and as you pull, if you have any last threads, you'll be able to just give them a little trim. Now I'm going to be able to put those two pieces of fur together right side, but I want the nap going in the same direction. So you can pin or clip the fur together. The first two seams you're going to sew are going to be the two long sides, which are the pieces that still have the selvage on them. And on one side, you are going to need to leave an opening because we're going to turn this right side out. And I would recommend at least leaving two hands of a space because that's a lot of fur that you're going to have to pull out. Little spot is just not going to be big enough. So be generous and leave a good opening. Now to sew the seam, it's really not much different than any other seam. You're going to want to stitch in the same direction as the nap. So the nap was going down, I'm going to stitch going down. So you're going to be able to stitch the one side and then flip it over and stitch the other side so you're also following that nap of the fabric. You're also going to sew a nice generous seam, at least a half an inch. Set your machine up just to a plain straight stitch. 
but you want it a little bit bigger. Instead of a 2.5, go to a 3.5. And because this is a knit, you need to use a stretch knit needle. And you can use a nice strong one like a 9014. Thread, this is 100% polyester, so you can use an all-purpose thread, which is 100% polyester. And I'm going to be using one from Coats. And because the fur has lots of different colors in it, you're going to be able to have many different options to choose from. Either of these browns will work fine. If you have a walking foot, this would be a good time to use it. But it's not necessary. You just want to use a wider foot so that the foot has more area that is covering the fabric. So let's get to the machine and stitch the two sides. As I'm sewing, I'm going to hold the fabric behind and I'm going to hold the fabric in the front. And I'm just going to hold it and keep it nice and taut, but I'm not going to force it under the machine. I'm gonna let the machine take it on its own, but I'm just going to help so that it doesn't bunch up. So I'm just holding it. And then you can take out the pins as you go along. When that seam has been done, if you look to the inside, you'll be able to see if you've stitched some of the fibers down. With some fur, you're not going to be able to see it. And because you have the nap going in the same direction, sometimes it's really hard to see that seam. If you find you've stitched some of those fibers in, well, you need to give it a brush. And this is why it's easier to do the side seams first. So you can turn this right side out and just brush that seam. Now you can't see that seam at all. The side seams are done, brushed, and then turned back so the right sides are out. The next, we are going to want to close off both ends. Now this time we're not going to be able to follow the direction or the nap of that fur because it is going in the opposite direction. So what we need to do is tuck that fur in as we sew. And you're going to need some kind of a tool to comb that wool in. Now this is just a chopstick that I've sharpened the end with just a pencil sharpener and then made it nice and smooth with sandpaper. You can even use a nail file. As you stitch, you're going to be able to comb the fibers in right before you stitch. And I'm going to comb in between those layers that fur as I'm stitching. So I'm just going to take that and fold it in just as I go along. You're going to continue this all the way down this one seam. So the fur is tucked inside. Now we need to do the other side. And with the last side, the nap is now coming in this direction. So you still need to take that fur and tuck it up inside, the same as you did the other side. It is very easy to sew with. It's a very soft fabric. There's no trouble at all. You just need to keep all of those fibers and push them inside. We've sewn the two seams along the side and then the two ends. And we did leave a nice big opening. And you know what's next. We need to turn this right side out. Now you're gonna be able to just fold that seam allowance in and hand stitch this closed. And the last thing is going to be doing a row of stitching all the way around the outside. So you're gonna match your seams together and do a two inch stitch all the way along. Now use your thread that's going to match as close as you can, match up your edges, and then follow the nap again. Stitch two inches all the way down. Do the same on the other side and make sure you follow the nap. And when you're gonna do the bottom and the top, you won't have to worry about the nap. Just match up that edge and do a two inch seam all the way along. And you're going to create a flange by doing that. That's going to keep it together so it's more like a blanket and it just makes it a little bit more elegant. 
Now where you've done that row of stitching, you might actually see the thread. And if you don't like that, brush it. And all that thread is going to disappear inside the fur. And you're done. And this is a project could be done in an afternoon. Have that nap of the fabric work for you and just tuck in those little fur ends and you are done. No fancy stitching at all. Now Shannon Fabrics does have a website and they have two pages of helpful hints on sewing with fur. I'll put a link in the description if you want to print those out and keep them on file. The hardest part about this is going to be deciding what fur you like best. Thank you for joining me today on Sew Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.